ESPN Plus recently debuted a brand new docuseries entitled Man in the Arena, highlighting the 22-year career of NFL quarterback Tom Brady, who lost Super Bowl 52 to backup quarterback Nick Foles and the Philadelphia Eagles, and then refused to shake Foles' hand after the 41-33 defeat. I don't care much for Tom Brady, but documentaries and docuseries have the tendency to change one's mind about a public figure, and Landon... You watched Man in the Arena, so will this change my mind? You know what? I'm going to come at it from a different angle here, David. Okay. One, the, the first thing I'm going to put on you here is before we even jump into Man in the Arena, I want you to know is probably 90% of the documentaries you watch are about people you don't like or bad people. I mean, are we, if we're you're, being you're honest here, there are a bunch of murder <laughs> mysteries. That, I mean, Tiger King, he was cheating those tigers. He was cheating those tigers. <laughs> So let me just tell you, Man in the Arena, what I really think, and to jump off here, Man in the Arena, what I really think is neat here is is much like Tiger or much like The Last Dance is these are these like stoic figures who we hear about every week, whether you're in sports or not, truly, and you really don't know that much about them. Maybe you think you do and you watch every week, but you, it's so easy to remember, as David noted, 22 years. I mean... If I pose the question to all of you guys right now, do you have any idea why Tom Brady even got to play in the NFL, his first start? Any idea as to how he got in? I would know. Hit it, Quam. Hit it. Uh, the, the starting quarterback for the Patriots at the time, I think it was Drew Bledsoe, got hurt. And Tom Brady came in and saved the day and turned around the season. Yes, I like the Patriots a lot. That's Absolutely correct. Like. Drew Bledsoe had his lungs just obliterated. But he was able to play again in the future. And much like with these star quarterbacks, Drew, Drew Bledsoe had just signed a massive mega deal at the time. So the idea was, all right, let's go rest up. Tom Brady will fill in for a little while. And Drew Bledsoe's coming back. But Bill Belichick never let Drew Bledsoe come back. And it's just a crazy thing to think that had that hit not happened in week two, we might not have any idea who Tom Brady is. So these stories are, are almost mythical. And there's three, four episodes. I think the fourth episode just released this morning. Um, it's just, it, it, some of these stories are just so incredible. Um, and I think it's neat to know about this character, whether you like him or not, David. Um, maybe you won a 10-part series on how many teams Nick Foles has been on. Um, I don't know. But <laughs> what I can tell you is, is you're going to hear about Tom Brady forever. And whether it's sports, whether it's music, news, however, these, these characters are going to kind of live with us. And I think it's neat to know about them. So when you get into a room, you can spit facts like Quam just did. I mean, come on. What feels better than being in the know? And you should be in the know the same way Tom was the man in the arena. Hmm. And that's my well, sign. I mean, I, I can't even look, like what he's what he's doing in his 40s is incredible on the Buccaneers. Like there's there's no question that like who has done what he's doing at his age at this level. Like it sucks as like someone who doesn't really like him personally, but like he's one of, if not the greatest quarterback of all time, it really hurts to say that. But like, also I think he's a big baby. So, you know, whatever. Makes but for what great stories superstar, though. But what competitive superstar is not the, the biggest baby? Let's like, let's be real. I know a big flopper like LeBron, like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Davis is going for all the greats right now. I mean, come on. But it started with right. Drake. I mean, now it's going to Tom Brady and LeBron. I mean, Quam's right. Right. LeBron like Tom Brady. <laughs> Quam's right. I mean, the rumors are there as to why Michael Jordan. We all love the Last Dance. The rumors are there. He left baseball. He left basketball to go to baseball potentially because of a quiet gambling scandal. So. The stories are there about all these stars, and it, it's just neat to see them unearthed. Sad that Tom Brady, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods get to kind of write the documentary and kind of narrate the way it goes. But hey, I'm here for it. They're great stories. Hmm. Well, Quam, since you were already spitting some facts before, were there any docuseries that changed your mind? Uh, yes, actually. So, Shangri La tells the story of the iconic music producer and record label CEO, Rick Rubin. So depending on which artist you talk to, they're either going to tell you that Rick Rubin is a magician with magic in his beard. He just knows how to make music and make your record go from here to into the stratosphere. Or they'll say he just lays in the studio with his shoes off and kind of does nothing. So I had to know the story behind the man in the myth of Rick Rubin. I had to watch Shangri-La on Showtime. And 
I can actually say I understand where artists come from when they say he's able to take your song from here to here. While he's not necessarily uh, your conventional music producer where he's like making the beats or, you know, he's um, engineering everything. He just has a real knack for being able to know what is needed in a song to make it better and take it to that next level. And he's obviously well, you know, trained musician. He, I think he, he played guitar and I think he played piano or maybe I'm not, maybe. Um, and he has done all his own producing, but from what I saw in the documentary, he really was able to just compose a track really well. And I don't mean like, you know, like classical music. I mean, the arrangements or suggesting the artist say, hey, how about you try, you know, going into your upper register and your in your vocal cords and singing it that way instead of trying to like, you know, sing it down here low. And you really get to see the the benefit to Rick Rubin and like his creative process and how he's able to really just compose a song and just really just elevate, you know, an, an artist's uh own musical capabilities and it doesn't hurt that some of my favorite artists who i really look you know look up to uh actually you know stand by him and you know say he's like the guru so shangri-la was a really eye-opening documentary uh and just like into his own musical process hmm. so it definitely Honestly, changed my mind because i was leaning towards yeah maybe he's just a, a guy who just is there but now that i know yeah Audrey, didn't you watch that McCartney 321 documentary that had Ruben in it? I did. Yeah, I liked it. Um, I think he's he's definitely unique, right? Like, he doesn't wear shoes. He's, like, free-flowing beard and, like, just really doing his own thing. Um, but I Sounds also like watched Angra Law. I know. I watched Angra Law a while ago, um, so I don't remember all the ins and outs. But I remember admiring that studio in Malibu because it is just bananas. So, you know, all so that producing crazy. So crazy. gets you somewhere. Hmm. <laughs> And Andre, I think you actually have a, a music-related documentary that has sort of changed your mind as well. I do. We're, everyone's going after the greats, so I'm just going to keep it going. So mine <laughs> is Miss Americana on Netflix, which is the 2020 Taylor Swift documentary. Um, no shade against Taylor Swift. Swifties, don't come after me. Um, she's great. She's fine. Not like totally my cup of tea, but I get it. Um, but watching this documentary like really made her seem like a person which is right the goal of a documentary or a docuseries is to like strip down the like celebrity and be like this is just a human being and that's what it did for me so um I really related to her in a lot of strange ways that I wasn't expecting so I will list a few of them um this opens with like the fact that she talks about really always wanting to be thought of as good and she just wanted everybody's approval. She wanted to be like the good girl doing the right thing. And that's like me to a T. Like I love it. I love rules. Like I want to like do a good job and I want people to pat me on the head. And like, I actually think she says like she loved getting pats on the head in the docu-series or in the documentary. So I really related to that. Um, she likes to put ice in her wine and is unapologetic about it. And I also like to put ice in my white wine um she there's a scene where they're like writing a new song and she wants to order food because it's you know the middle of the night they were working on this album for so long and she's like oh how about burritos and as she's eating this burrito she talks about how she never had a burrito until two years before that in her mid-20s and there's a lot of foods that I've never had like I've never had shrimp David knows this like there's a lot of foods that I just <laughs> never ate so the point is me and Taylor Swift have a lot in common and I really came around to her and um, it's a really great documentary. I think um, you guys would all probably enjoy it. Um, it really like humanizes her a lot. Um, so yeah, that's my pick. Yeah. And I like that about her. Cause I mean, I think the, like the public perception or at least among fans is that she's very much this like, humble down to earth person but there's also like when you're that big when you're at her level there's also a machine that is necessary to keep the ship going um oh, yeah and i think by nature of that machine the publicity machine the 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 legal team like all of it that goes with it i think there's another group of people who are like oh this can't be real this isn't her this is just all this product of promotion and all of that and maybe she's not who she says she is 
Um, so it is interesting then to see that maybe she is, you know. So the yeah. the, the documentary is certainly doing its job, I guess. For sure. Some yeah. would say that um, she's a pretty pretty swift engine to churn out some music. Would that be her as a machine and swift? <laughs> and that was a miss. It was a huge miss yeah. there. <laughs> You I tried. went for it. I, just, work. I was sitting here the whole time okay. going for it. It was a huge <laughs> mess. Yeah. Well, speaking of, again, <laughs> swinging for some of the greats, I recently binged Peter Jackson's three part, eight hour docuseries entitled The Beatles Get Back. Look, I know the Beatles are one of the greatest bands of all time. I've just at, never actually been a Beatles fan. If you're like, you're a fan of the Beatles, no, it doesn't mean I don't like the Beatles. I just don't care about the Beatles. Um, I actually do enjoy a lot of their early 60s songs, like Love Me Do, She Loves You, I Want to Hold Your Hand, like all of like the Ed Sullivan, like mushroom top cut versions of the Beatles, rather than like the later 60s songs, like Hey Jude or Let It Be. Um, and as it turns out, the series actually follows the Beatles as they were making the 1969 album Let It Be and a 1970 documentary. Like this is like behind the scenes of making a documentary and an album. It's really, really like weird inception. Um, and it really provides incredible insight into the interpersonal dynamics of the band at the height of their popularity, as well as their incredible musical gift. And one of my favorite moments is in the first episode, it shows Paul McCartney sitting down to like fiddle with his bass guitar, just searching for a song. He has no song. He sits down and it's just ding, 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 like totally do like on his guitar, searching for anything. And Ringo and George are watching him. Like George is sitting there yawning as Paul McCartney's playing in front of him. And then suddenly Paul is strumming and just speaking his gibberish and he just finds get back. He just comes up with it on the spot, the entire, like the, 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 the whole melody. Um, and you just see this moment that he discovers it. And it's incredible. It's an incredible look at musical genius as it happens, something that is rarely ever captured on camera like that. Um, and it just like blew my mind. Um, and then on the other hand, episode three features a moment where Ringo Starr farts. So there are like two sides to the coin. Of the Beatles. Of course he does. Um, Very quality. But I highly recommend it. I mean, you see the fights, you see, you know, the the seeds of the Beatles break up, plus a lot of like really fascinating moments like the the um the concert or the rooftop concert. It's really, really cool um, for fans and non-fans alike. And it actually made me care more about the Beatles. Yeah. Look at us. You cared about yourself. things we didn't hey. care about. Yeah. What'd you say, Quan? I was going to say, did it change your opinion of, on any of their songs? Do you, like, now like Hey Jude? I mean, I who do, I mean, you can't not like Hey Jude. I'm just not like, oh, my God, Hey Jude. Like, <laughs> But uh, I did, like, it was really cool. So now I'm going to ramble just slightly. There's a show called Songland that was on NBC that I really, really love, where they have, like, um, these songwriters come on, pitch their song, sing it, and then this panel of producers – in real time sits there and makes it better and says like, what if instead of this, you said this, or what if instead of nah, 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 you went nah, 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 nah. and like, they just mumble their way through it and just add little bits and pieces and up and down and hear like little things that we would never even think of and instantly make an okay song into like this earworm. And it's just so hard to fathom. And like, when you watch that, you're like, Oh my God, like Paul McCartney came up with get back in a minute fiddling with his guitar and you just like can't not appreciate a song when you see musical genius happen in real time like that i think what's even neater about that is it happened so long ago like so much today is 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 taken video of and recorded whereas in back then it just wasn't wasn't such a thing so for that to happen at that time period is kind of neat too That's, that is really neat David. yeah yeah, highly recommend it. It's a lot of, it's a lot to watch, eight hours. So it's a commitment, but totally worth it. Um, and all of you out there can check out the docuseries we just discussed and more by just saying what to watch into your voice remote. 